All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to make sauerkraut. Let's get it. All right, guys, so first what you're gonna need is a head of cabbage. It depends on how much you're making. We're making five gallons today, so we're gonna need more than just a head. I think we're gonna need like maybe six or seven. So I'm gonna pull this one up and then I'll get back with y'all. Here we go. All right, guys, so this is what you're gonna do to get it apart. You gotta chop off the leaves just like that to where it's just the head. And then once you've got all the leaves chopped off, then you're gonna spray it all off to get it just clean and stuff. You gotta get all the dirty leaves off of the cabbage. All right, I'm filming. All right. So you don't wanna leave it in the ground for too long or else it'll bust. And if it busts, then all the bugs can get in it and then you won't have as much cabbage. Now you gotta chop it down the middle. It helps to have a sharp knife. Yeah, it helps to have a sharp knife. And you gotta get the core out. You gotta get the little know, spot like that, the little core. Yep. Yeah. You're gonna kinda cut it in like a little triangle. And you should be able to pull it out and spray it off. Then you're gonna put all the cabbage heads and some water to soak so and then you do that to the other side of the cabbage head and then let it soak for a little bit we're using stone head cabbage and that is probably in my opinion the best cabbage to use but i guess you can use any cabbage that you want to but we use stone head cabbage i just wanted to tell you all that all right then what you're going to do is you're going to put it on the shredder i guess Trout knife. Trout knife. And then just shred it just like that. And then we have a crock pot right there. Not a crock pot. See in there. Just a crock, it's not a crock pot. <laughs> okay, so you're just gonna shred it up like that. And then what you're gonna do is get another one once that one's about run out because you don't wanna chop your fingers off with this because that would hurt very bad. It's like Pac-Man. Cool. All right guys, so you also need some iodized salt and you're gonna put a good amount of salt on it after you're done smashing it or shredding it. So once you shred it, and it gets about halfway, that's not actually halfway because you're going to have to stop it. Not too hard. Just like this. Make sure you get around the edges. <laughs> You're telling us, trying to bring the brown up. Trying to bring. Trying to bring the brine up. Brine's kind of like cabbage juice. It looks like water, but it's not water. All right, guys. So that was how many heads was that? Like three or four heads. So I'm pretty sure it takes around 12 heads to fill up a five-gallon crock. So yeah, I just want to let y'all know that if y'all are gonna make five gallons of it, which is a lot of sauerkraut. But yeah. Sauerkraut is pretty good. I love eating raw cabbage. All right, guys, so I'm chopping it up. And sometimes it'll get stuck like that, but you just gotta pull it back and then push it back in. That. 
I do think raw cabbage tastes pretty good. I think I should go get another one. Alright. Once you get to about that much, you go get another one. But you don't want to chop your fingers off. Because that would hurt. If you think this is helpful and you're enjoying this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. See y'all. salt it and you're gonna put about I don't know how much salt this is but you just taste it you just taste it and that's good so and then you get the stopper and you just kind of beat it like this and why are you doing that because it gets the Brine up to the top, and that helps it. Uh, what's the word? Ferment. Mm -hmm. And then once it gets like all good and mushy, and like the brine, like the watery kind of stuff is at the top, then you're gonna get some more cabbage and do that again and you're going to do that until it's about full so yeah so guys it'll kind of make this noise when it's done and you'll see like a watery kind of thing come up to the top and that's the brine it's like cabbage juice and that's what you want at the top because it helps ferment it so yeah I just want to tell y'all that just in case y'all weren't getting anywhere with it all right guys so that um watery kind of stuff coming up to the top that's brine and that really helps it ferment right um. ferment. and you want to get it like up to the top to where it's like really sloshy and sometimes if you hit it then it'll splash up in your face like when you're stomping it so yeah that's you do want a lot of brine up at the top because I guess the more the brine, the better the sauerkraut it is. So, yeah. All right, you good? Yep. All right, guys. So, when you're done shredding it and stomping it, then you got to cover it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take these cabbage leaves that we have from the cabbage that we picked or pulled, and we're just going to set on top of that just like that. You want the brine to come out on mm -hmm. top of it? You want the brine to come out on top of it, but not the cabbage. Try to keep the cabbage off of it. That's good. Alright. Then you're just gonna 
put a couple. Yeah, you got to clean the leaves off before you put them on there, though. What? All right, got to get your plate. All right, then you get a plate. Where is it? Right there? I don't like that they hold on to you. And you're going to turn over. Set it on top of the leaves, just like this. Yep. And you get the brine on top of Push it down. Push it down. All right, push it down. Mm -hmm. Get the brine on top of that. And set your rock on top. And then set a rock on top to keep the plate weighed down so it doesn't float up. Alright. These are fine. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take an old shirt or like a rag or something that can fit over it good. One that you don't want to use anymore because it'll get ruined once you're done with it. Yep. So then you set it on top just like that. Yep. And then... Yep. You take this, take some string or rope, and you tie it around there nice and tight. Just like this. Oh, I'm sorry. I got two needles! Might need a knife. Yeah, you'll need a knife to cut it. How many times do I wrap it around? That's good. All right. Just tie it off tight there. All right, and then you need a knife. Alright, you ready? Yep. Alright, so once you get it like really tight, you gotta cut it off. Then you're gonna tie a knot. Just like this. And you wanna tie it really tight because you do not want the shirt to come off. Alright. Like that. And then, is one knot good enough or you want me to double knot it? Okay. So then you're going to put it somewhere for long enough to, for it to ferment. How long is it? 18 to 21 days. 18 to 21 days. Depending on how sour you want it. It depends on how sour you want it. The longer you leave it out, the more sour it gets. Okay, so now we're going to take it to where we're going to leave it. So here we go. All right, guys, so we're going to put this in like a, you want to put it in like a cooler, dry place. So where it's not like humid and stuff. Because... I guess you want to leave it longer for, to make it sour, which is 18, 21 days, and shorter, which is like like before 20 and like all that stuff. I don't really know. But the shorter you leave it in, the less sour it is, and the longer you leave it in, the more sour it is. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye.